วัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Sala Sutasri Sopha, Sala of Blessing, Sala of Giving. Today's concert is supported by the Embassy of Israel. On the occasion of Thai Father's Day and in memory of His Majesty King Pumipon Adunjade the Great, the Embassy of Israel joins in with all Thais to celebrate with digital concert performed by two renowned artists from Thailand and Israel. Nadjon Tarak, Thailand's Outstanding Contemporary Artist Silapa Thon Award, and Noah Khorin, the Principal Cellist of Israel Chamber Orchestra. Today's concert will take you through Thailand, the classical music world, and Israel. We will begin our concert with Falling Rain, graciously composed by His Majesty King Pumipon Adunyade the Great, describing the beautiful and prosperous land of smile, of food, and of agriculture. Then our two artists will invite you into their classical music world as this year celebrate 250th anniversary of Beethoven's birth. As classical musicians, both of them will perform the first movement of one of the most challenging cello sonatas by Beethoven. Lastly, our concert will end with a little trip to Israel, Jerusalem of gold. Now, put on your best earphones and enjoy the concert. Thank you for letting us be part of this very special concert in honor of King Rama the Ninth. Uh, the State of Israel and King Rama the Ninth have a very, very special relationship. When King Rama the Ninth 
started and founded the philosophy of sufficiency and the royal projects, he was looking around for countries who could be part of this uh, vision and philosophy. And indeed, he approached Israel, which he thought could share, are part of this philosophy and share the values that are the basis of this philosophy. And he invited quite a few Israeli experts to come to Thailand and work in the royal projects uh, hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder with uh, Thai farmers all over the country in irrigation, in cultivating, and in uh, farming. And indeed, uh, Israeli experts in the 60s work in a lot of royal projects. Some of them we are still working till today. The most famous probably is uh, the royal project in Hop Kapung, where uh, as recent as last week, we inaugurated uh, yet another uh, greenhouse uh, just last week. I should mention also that uh, King Rama the Ninth uh, made a point of uh, sending uh, the young princesses then, Princess Serendon and Princess Chulabon to Israel to spend a few weeks in a kibbutz in Israel and to have a first-hand experience in Israel of the life of Israel. And indeed, uh, later on during the years, Princess Chulabon went quite a few times to Israel to keep the strong ties between uh, herself and the people of Thailand and the people of Israel. So we are indeed very, very proud and very honored and privileged that uh, we could be part of this special relationship between the people of Israel and the people of Thailand. So again, thank you very much for letting us be part of this special project and special concert in honor of King Rama the Ninth. Kap Kum Kap.
So I am here today with Noah Horin, our cellist for today. As we talk together a lot and we've had many conversations during some rehearsals mm -hmm. that you've had here before, I noticed that you have very interesting childhood. Actually, very interesting to share with our Thai audience and maybe other people who are not from Israel because you grew up in a kibbutz. And I think that's very particular of Israel, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, I was born and raised in kibbutz, which is something particular to Israel. Kibbutz is basically a um, collective community, which based on the ideological of um, Zionism and socialism. It was founded, the first kibbutz was founded in, established in 1909, mm -hmm. uh, basically before the Israel country was founded. Yeah. The, all the, the, the idea of the European Jewish who came um, around the early 19th and also further on is to build Israel as a country for the Jewish people with their hands, like literally with their hands. Um, so my grandparents, both sides of my mom and dad came uh, from Europe and they both they established the kibbutzes, different kibbutzes. Mm -hmm. So my parents also born and raised in the kibbutz. Today time it changed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it's not, it, not longer a commune, which mm -hmm. it used to be. Ah. Uh, those time it used to be like, really like a commune. It was a small community living together, sharing everything. The dining room we had, uh, we had the dining room that mm -hmm. we all having our meals in the dining room all together. Oh, with different families. All the kibbutz together. Oh, okay. Yes. So, uh, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner we were having together in the dining room, dining hall. Ah. Uh, yes. So it's kind of like a big one, big family that everyone. Yes. Lives yes. Together. Everyone know each other. It's it's small community. It's around the bigger, the biggest kibbutz. It's around one thousand people. Not more than that. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, it, it's very small community and close community. Um, so yeah, I was born and raised in kibbutz. Um, it used to be like that. Uh, I, in, in my generation, no longer in my kibbutz, no longer. But uh, the children was, were sleeping at the children's house, what's called children's house. They were not sleeping at their parents' house. They were, you went to see their parents two hours a day, maybe. But most of the time, they spent in the children's house. Oh, yes. so all the adults there, they are kind of like uh, the adults parents too are busy with working ah. in the field, agriculture, in the, in the, in the dining hall, in uh, the children's room, uh, every, being teacher, they all um, sharing or giving the part, their part to, to the kibbutz. Ah, so everybody contributes something to the community. Exactly. Ah, okay. And growing up there, like you said, that you, you know, the children's house and, and all that, you are very passionate 
about many different things, yes. and especially in arts and music. Yes. So how does that sit in in uh, this kind of community? Oh, there are two sides to the story. In one hand, I, I must say that I'm very grateful to my kibbutz, Ayelita Shachar, this is the name of my kibbutz, that uh, supported in my interest and my passion. So my kibbutz uh, paid for my education in music, in the cello, and for my, my uh, ballet classes, my oh. dance classes, which is something uh, a bit unusual. Usually every kid in the kibbutz, because we all get the same, this is ideological yes. of, the, um, of the kibbutz, that mm -hmm. we all share in getting the same. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I was paid for another, another hobby. Yes. Um, in the other side of it, I was always a bit different. Oh, I, I, I can, it's just something very, I guess, um, subjective. Mm -hmm. I felt different mm -hmm. um, as my interest was different. Mm -hmm. And I think all the ideological of the kibbutz is kind of, we all the same. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of socialism, we yeah. all the same. And I, I wasn't really the same. I was, I, my well, passion was very much in, in art, in music, in dance. And um, so you're very, so you're very passionate about what you were doing. Yes. Even at a young age, you really love your, you sorry, with cello and you really love it. And with your dance as well, you really, really love it. And I think what's really nice that you said that the kibbutz saw that you're so passionate about two things that it's so hard to choose that yes. they give you two things to learn. Also, I, I remember then my teachers, uh, the dance teacher, the ballet teacher, and also my cello teacher, they wrote a letter mm -hmm. to the kibbutz to recommend to continue and support my oh. study. That was also very, that's very, nice. very oh, yeah. helpful. I, I remember that in, in, in the beginning of my cello study, I, I didn't realize, because, because the, my kibbutz is very far away from the center, from Tel Aviv, it's very mm. northern, it's actually 15 minutes from the border of Lebanon. Oh, okay. Yes. okay yeah. So it's not really in the middle of all the art and music scene in Tel Aviv. And all the music school, the, the known music school and conservatory. So it was very hard for me to, to understand that I need to for example, practice every day. <laughs> because no one used to practice every day from where I, I came yes. from. It's not Tel Aviv that you, you can go and hear concert every day and you're going to the conservatory and everyone practicing so you have this atmosphere of let's work hard because there is competition. Oh yes, sure. So, yeah. so I, didn't have, I didn't have it. I think because of my mom is a music teacher. Ah, okay. Yes. And, and she helped me with that a lot. And I had a great cello teacher. Oh. He's like a, a father to me, or a mm -hmm. grandfather to me. He's, uh, he, I think, deserved to him. I'm, I'm playing the cello and I love music because mm. he, he gave me this passion. He made me fell in love with the instrument and, and, and music. He yes. was such a special character and such a special figure to me. So not only that you have your own passion, but also actually your teacher means a lot to you. Yes. Having someone who's, who can transfer that passion and not being just a teacher telling you, you know, teaching you the skills and the techniques, but yes. also to inspire you Definitely. To, to do music. Yeah. And how did you uh, divide time? Oh. to practice because you mentioned that like you're not used to practicing because there's nobody else doing that much of music yes how so how my you mom measure that my mom tells me that in the beginning in the, my first year i didn't practice a lot <laughs> <laughs> don't tell it to my students <laughs> i didn't practice a lot in the early years i i started to practice later when i started to go uh to the conservatory which was in different kibbutz Yes. And to meet with people who, with, with, with children who also play the instrument, and that gave me motivation. Ah. And I went to master classes and some seminars, and it gave me motivation. I, I, you know, I, I went out for my small kibbutz, mm -hmm. and, and then I saw other children who played, and that gave me the motivation to start practicing. And then I was also dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was basically a very busy girl. I didn't yeah. really have free time. I, I was... Uh, Going to school, sometimes I, mm -hmm. I, I woke up before school to play scales. Oh, okay. So yeah. you practice like before school and after school? 
Yes. So I, 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 I woke up at six, I played some scales, I went to, the, to, the, to school and came back. Sometimes, sometimes I went directly from school to, to the dancing class mm -hmm. or to some, um, some rehearsal in the conserv conservatory. Mm -hmm. So basically almost every day I had something. Ah, okay. Um, but that was good for me at that time because I didn't, f I didn't really find my, myself in the, um, in the kibbutz, um, let's say, society, mm -hmm. in the kibbutz children house or uh, mm -hmm. children um, environment because I, I felt, I, I guess I was different. <laughs> so I, so in a way your passion becomes your sort of sanctuary, you can yes. say that. Like, because you really feel safe with music and with that and you get to spend so much time doing these two things and with your passion that drives you forward, like yes. after, because you didn't stay in the keyboards forever, then you move out and I think you continued in, in music studies, right? Yes, so I moved to Tel Aviv uh, after my army service as mm -hmm. an outstanding musician. Um, we are very lucky to, to get this kind of, of outstanding of, of, of conditions that allow us in the army to, to keep our practice and yes. concerts and auditions and competition. Because everyone has to do this um, service. Yeah, it's mandatory. Yeah. Yes. yeah, it's mandatory for everyone, whether you're a musician, artist yes. or whatever. You, everyone has to do it. Yes. And with this special condition, or well, as a musician, in a way, it helps you, it allows you to have some time to practice. No? Yes, yes, we got special condition uh, for, for musician. It's uh, we, we need to stay six hours a day in the, in the army and we get day off if we need to go to competition, concerts and, um, and audition. Uh, so it, it allows us to continue with our career. I think it's very nice that it doesn't, during those times, even though um, it's not easy to to do this, but I think um, at least it still allows you to pursue exactly. your hopes and dreams, so that yes. you don't have to. Because for musicians to stop practicing for two years, that just yeah. impossible. Unfortunately, <laughs> not every musician or or artist get it. You need to to kind of you need to play an exam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a little bit like a competition. Mm -hmm. You're playing an exam, and then uh, they give you score. Yeah. And then the army says, okay, this year we're accepting 10 outstanding musicians for girls and 10 places for boys. And then mm -hmm. the higher 10 score gets, the, gets this condition. Wow. So, yeah. So I think your music journey, like, well, I can, if I can call it the music journey, you've gone through a lot doing that, like from, you know, finding your passion, really yeah. show everyone that you really want to study this thing yeah. as a young girl and then go on with your music studies and really even go through the military service. Yeah, I think I, think I had many ups and downs. I think it's normal for any musicians, but, but sometimes you want to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard for me to practice every day. It's such a, uh, you need such a high self-discipline. And for that, if, you, if you're living in, in a place like where I was born, it, um, you need even higher self-discipline because you don't have these um, support systems that you have, for example, in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. The many kids are doing the same, and music schools that yeah. you can attend to. And determination, I think. Yes. That's very important to just have that. that. I wanted to quit, I think, well, like 100 times, but I knew somewhere deep in my heart that I, I, I told my mom when I was young, I, can't do, I, I, I cannot handle with it, but I cannot handle also without it, I know it. Ah, yes, it's very important. I think once you know you can't live without it, no. you, you, you have no choice, you have to do it. And I think yeah. uh, the, the one of my biggest um, conflict it was when I understood I cannot, I don't have time to proceed with the dancing and the cello, and I needed to choose because mm -hmm. it was too much already. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel that I could proceed, I could proceed with the dance as a hobby. It was yes. never a hobby to me. I was very much connected to it. And I didn't want to proceed as a hobby one day a week or two days a week. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really had the feeling that if I'm doing it, I need to do it professionally. Oh. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't do both professionally. And, and then I needed to choose. 
And you know, it wasn't so obvious for me that he would choose a cello. So how, how did you manage to I choose? I really love my teacher, my cello teacher. <laughs> so I mean, important to, yes. it's very important to have an, an, an inspiring teacher. Yes, and, and this is something I, I take with me all the time when I, when I teach. Mm. I remember that, uh, I always remember that I was choosing the cello because of my cello teacher. Mm. And when I'm teaching, uh, I always keep it in my mind. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I need to be a big influence and yeah. a great figure to my students, not less than that. I'm trying my best, you know. <laughs> I'm always trying my best because it, it's in this age, in these small ages, it's about that, it's about connection. Yes. And about being um, someone, an educational person. Yes. And not just, uh, not just, yeah, I teach you how to play the cello. It's yeah. Like, it's more. It's about, more than that. It's mm -hmm. way more about uh, more than that, and you know it because uh, you have a big school here. Yes. It's it's much more than that. Yes. And I'm I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so what would be the last thing I think that would be really important that you would like to um, advise or suggest or just a few words for some young musicians who are trying, who are passionate or who sometimes had doubts like you said like many times you want to quit like a hundred times what would you say to them you know I really believe it's a hard profession you really need to love it yes deeply love it honestly love it so just ask yourself very honestly and and be courage with yourself and ask yourself uh, do I really like it do I love it and if do, do, can I live without it? And if the answer for the last question is no, so just be more easy with yourself. If someday you feel that you cannot practice, that's fine, nothing will happen. <laughs> because sometimes you're so stressed about practicing, 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 and we make ourselves crazy. Yes. with the guilt that if, if we miss one hour of practicing or we miss uh, one day of practicing and I think if I would now know that if one day I won't practice nothing will happen if the other day I practice good yes and uh, I will encourage them to go to concerts attend to many concerts as possible because that gives you motivation and, and inspiration and inspiration too. and you learn a lot from listening I didn't do it enough as a child because I didn't have enough opportunities mm -hmm. from where I, I was uh, um, born in the kibbutz. There were not many concerts going on there, and meet with other with other students and play together. Yes. And remember that most important thing is to to make joy to that the music is a joyful thing. Yes. And as a kid, I, as a child, I, I, I didn't enjoy it a lot. I, I, I loved it. I loved music, but I was so hard with myself. Mm. And I didn't enjoy it a lot. So enjoy Not it. Enough. That will be the most important enjoy thing. Enjoy it. Have fun. Work hard. Practice. Yes. But also be nice to yourself. If, some, if you're playing some wrong note, so okay, you can fix it later. But nothing happened. Yes. Just be a bit easier with yourself. A bit forgiveness with yeah. yourself. I, I wasn't like that. With it. It, it took me years to learn it. And I, I think you, you can get better results mm -hmm. if you're enjoying the process. Yeah. Um, this is important to... Uh, so ask yourself if you love it or not, if you can live with it or without it. If you can't live without it, you have to go on, <laughs> obviously. And if yes. you go on, be relaxed with yourself, but also work hard. Yes. Yeah. So those are the things that we would leave you and our young musicians, um, these words of wisdom <laughs> from Noah. And thank you so much thank for you. sharing your talents with us today. And um, we'll see who will come and share their talent with us in our next episode. Only at Salah Sutasiri Sopha. Sawadee